Hello, my name's Juliette Byrne and I'm an interior designer. We're based in Chelsea, very near Chelsea Harbour and um, I've been running my business now for 28 years and we have a wonderful team of designers here um, and we offer a very diverse, uh, varied service to clients ranging from one set of curtains right through to renovating an entire property. I've always been interested in design um, from a very early age. Uh, I went to an international school and, uh, called the Lycée Francais and that was in South Kensington. So we always used to go to the museums and mix with a very um, diverse uh, range of people from all over the world. And I think now with so many international clients in London, it's really given me an insight into different cultures. I think we do have a style. Obviously, we work for very many different clients all over the world, so we tend to adapt our style. Uh, but if I could say perhaps chic and contemporary um, with a classic twist, then I think those three words would probably sum up the style that we try and achieve. It's quite unusual to be talking about lighting before we've even chosen a piece of furniture. Um, but we often renovate properties and so actually integrating the lighting early on within the planning stage is crucial because uh, particularly John Cullen often recess lighting, they do a light source which isn't a very obvious one. I think lighting adds a layer effect to any interior. So if you just have a room that has simple down lights, you're going to end up with quite a, an office and more institutional lighting effect, which in some places is sort of what clients are looking for. Well, what we try and do is working closely with the lighting designer, um, design a floor plan which shows the way that we would use the room. So perhaps work on the seating areas and integrate plugs and sockets that are underneath the floor or tucked under rugs so that you can have low level lamps. Um, we also would suggest having wall lights perhaps, um, pendants over kitchen bar areas and dining areas. And we often, if we are allowed to put in on a staircase, rather beautiful pendant lighting. So you, as you're coming up through the property, you get this wonderful effect, droplets of glass lighting coming down. So it can be very dramatic. Um, obviously, each interior is different, but we think lighting is one of the most important elements of design. Well, lighting controls um, are very fashionable and um, at the moment we're getting more feedback that simplicity is what clients are looking towards. So perhaps a mood setting of four settings in the main reception areas and perhaps in the family room and kitchen areas and then maybe a two setting up in the master bedroom and children's rooms so that it's not too complicated, um, it's easy to use and you're, but you're still achieving that wonderful layered look and the drama that you get from lighting but as a lot of our clients are international and own maybe two or three properties across the world, the last thing they want to do is arrive back on a late flight and not remember how to use the control system. So we try and work with each client and if they want something more challenging, complicated, we can do that as well. Well, I'd like to work with them from the start, really, uh, coming back to what I said earlier, is it's very difficult to retrofit um, integrated lighting. You can always take a wall light off and put another wall light on, but if you actually want to do the different subtle lighting that lighting designers will try and integrate, having that information and input very early on is crucial to the project. Well, it depends very much on the style that the client's looking for. Um, we tend to use quite a lot of Porta Romana lighting, Vaughan, Heathfield, Tyson, um, and we often source um, bases and have them turned into different types of light fixtures. So for one particular job I did in Sussex, we found um, two zinc milk churns and turned those into um, lamps with beautiful shades for their dining room, and that was very effective. If something is a little bit more contemporary, then there's many, many Italian brands that you can go to from Moe and onwards. 
I think my favourite project to date is St Luke's, which is behind me, um, which was um, a double basement dig out. So the last one that was um, actually allowed in Kensington and Chelsea, and it was actually a new build house as well. And to have the opportunity to work on a new build property right from the start, we were planning and going through that stage was, was a wonderful thing to do and most unusual. Um, and we got the chance to really design every part of the house working alongside the architects right through to a turnkey finish. Um, I think the most challenging project was a um, chalet that we did um, about five years ago called Chalet Florally, which is in Saint-Martin de Belleville up in the Alps. And when the clients bought it, it was um, an unmodernized um, working, almost like a pension. So it was a beautiful building, but internally was very dated. And um, the clients wanted to turn it into a very chic boutique hotel where people could rent the whole house and have a 50th, or people could come and stay individually there. And so we had six months from when the original place shut to when they wanted to open at the start of the season. And we had to renovate the whole property, change the configuration of the rooms, redo lighting and finishes, and then we managed to get it done on time. And, and now it's been a great success. I love being a designer because every day is different and every client is different and you're constantly challenged and pushed and you need to develop your style and ideas and try and achieve something that the client's going to be really happy with. I think it's very important for a client to have a look and research who they think would suit them. And again, that's very much driven by personality, the style that the designer can achieve, and also budget, because that's very important. And if it's a small project or a huge project, the type of designer you choose would probably be different. I like to think I stand out from other designers because I've had many years of experience in the industry. I think I've got a very dynamic, young, creative team who work with me, who constantly inspire me. And I think we try and achieve and offer a fantastic service, very individual, and we follow up after the property's finished. So if there's any problems or they need things sorted out or they want to maybe do another room, then we're more than happy to dip back in. So we're, we're there for our clients from start to finish. I think Jackie Onassis is very inspiring. I think her style was just timeless. And not only in the way the clothes that she wore and the amazing lifestyle she had. And I love the sort of American colonial look or the Hamptons weekend look with the shiplap and the boarding and, you know, the Ralph Lauren style. And I think that's probably who I'd like to work for. I think that one of the most challenging rooms or houses would be a listed grade two star property. And um, I've worked with John Cullen on one in Regent's Park. And the problem with the grade two star, even though they're the most beautiful houses, you're not actually allowed to put a lot of um, down lights or actually penetrate any of the fabric of the building. So it's trying to achieve a subtle lighting without reverting back to just your single pendant in the ceiling. And so that is one of the most challenging things is creating an amazing ambiance, but not being able to do the things that you perhaps normally be able to do in a conventional home. I think design trends are people wanting to come home, wanting to be relaxed and actually that is very important for a designer to understand and I think a lot of people now, especially with the economy, are reverting back to comfortable L-shaped sofas, relaxing, entertaining perhaps more at home, less going out to dinner and so creating that type of environment is something that we're being asked more and more to do.
I think all my projects are exciting. Um, we're working for a number of international clients and we do have some wonderful projects. There's an apartment we're doing north of the park, uh, which we're very excited about. And we've got a chance to do quite a few bespoke interior pieces in joinery with leathers and textured metals. And so we've been very fortunate to work on that. Um, we're also working abroad on a chalet in Mejev, and that's going to be a big construction program so we're working with local craftsmen and um, creating a wonderful family home for the clients so um, our projects are very diverse um, and they're all very challenging but those are two of my favorite ones at the moment Well, becoming an interior designer is a wonderful thing, so I would always encourage them. Um, I think it's very important to um, study and understand about um, the ver various um, methods that you can use, so either using the computer for drawing work or hand sketching, um, being able to put together the schemes and also understanding from our point of view, because we do a lot of renovation, the electrical layout plans, bathroom designs and so really to understand the whole field it may be good to do a course um, and actually study it before you go into the industry. Well, we're very happy to work anywhere in the world and uh, we're also happy to work in London for international clients. Um, our team travels and we can work with clients really from anywhere and do any style. Um, and at the moment we've quoted for a job in Jordan and may well work with John Cannon Lighting should we have the opportunity. Um, we can work in, um, in the States and in the south of France and in Paris. So really wherever the project is and often we will do a property in London for clients and then perhaps we'll then be asked to do a second property for them or even a third. And we've even worked on yachts and planes too. So we're very diverse and very adaptable. I relax at the end of the day um, by taking my dog for a walk or riding my horse or just generally relaxing with friends, uh, maybe visiting a gallery in the evening. And also we have a lot of social events, um, especially during design week and focus. So often, like for instance this evening, I'll go to another showroom, see another uh, load of friends and designers and talk things through. And I find that's a really good way to wind up the day.